good. I, I moved the chair, but I move it towards you, right? Oh, he was or am listening. I on camera now? Good. He was listening. <laughs> well, I'm sitting on the chair, so I had to touch it. Is it good? Am I looking good? That's the you most important thing. No. You look fantastic. You always do. You look fantastic, do. too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ah, so it's good to be here. Yeah. To, um, Chris Marquette, by the way, by everybody. <laughs> yes. OK, how do we start this? Um, we just did. The two of us are, I'd say the two of us are, I, I don't want to sound make this sound weird. We're kind of the podcast fossils, <laughs> you know? OK, well, I've been called old school. <laughs> I've been called no, old. No, no, you look much better than that. but. I've never I just, been called a fossil. No, no, I'm, I don't mean it that way. It's I'm just, just, it's just I've just had the seventh anniversary of my show. Wow, yeah. So I seven guess years. I, yeah. And when, when did you start? 2005, 2004? 2005. When in 2005? Uh, 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 December. December 2005? Yeah. April. I April win. 2005? Yeah. Darn it! <laughs> Get up! Oh. So... <laughs> It's it's really interesting because we're we're at the at the New Media Expo here and yeah. um, the the whole podcasting thing is just is still around. That's that's the first thing that is that is really awesome. Yeah. And um, I just think that that more people need to to realize what opportunities lie in podcasting, getting something out to a niche audience. So, so let's talk about that. I mean, you know, podcasting has such a range, obviously. And when we say podcasting, just to clarify, we're not talking just audio. We're not talking we're just talking video. We're talking all kind of web video, as as Blog World is calling it, web TV. Web TV, new uh, media. New There's media. lots of there are lots of words for words it. Words for it, yeah. But um, everything that you kind of do that is subscribable online, you can go out to a large audience, like kind of like I do, I, I, I cover technology, which is a huge range of things. Yeah. You focus really a lot on photography. You're on an photography, amazing photographer. I do, I do the shot, uh, thank you. I do the shot tips, uh, this show tips from the yes. top floor. And, and the opportunities, also the business opportunities that have come out right. of podcasting. Um, I did, I did a talk here the other day about well, our panel of international podcasters and we're talking mm -hmm. about how that really works in an international context. And um, for that talk, I, I went back to, to really looked at what kind of things happened in my life through podcasting. And I, I, I kind of liken it to this, like almost like you plant a seed, that's mm -hmm. the podcast, and then there are different branches growing out of that. Right. And those branches are like chains of events. You have this one thing that leads to another and leads to another and then in hindsight everything looks so logical like this this is because that happened and that happened but when you start that and plant that seed you don't really know that you don't right. Steve Jobs said it in his Stanford speech mm -hmm. you can't connect the dots looking forward just just, just in hindsight back. and and you can throw out a lot of seeds yes and you don't just hope that one sticks. You do have to take some action on right. those seeds. And and there is and there's this one chain of events that I picked out for this talk that I that I um, I think is really kind of a good example. Okay. Um, this podcast led to me uh, being able to do workshops. So I, I'm, I travel the world. I teach photography from the United States, Canada, Germany, Himalayas. Next year I'll go to Japan. Nice. Uh, take I photographers just got there. Back from there. Awesome place. Awesome. Yeah. We go to Hokkaido. Um, I like saying that because Dave gives me a hard time. Oh, does he? About saying, I just was at Japan. I just, uh, yeah, drop it here. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in September, we'll, we'll take a group of people to Canyonless National Park. Nice. To, to camp out there and, and do landscape photography. But this whole, this whole workshop thing has, has led me to meet a friend in Colorado. He's a filmmaker. He does the Rest of Everest podcast. So um, this kind of led to us planning together to take photographers to the Himalayas. And then um, we've done that for three times now, mm -hmm. and this would, none of these events, meeting him and then doing the workshops and then coming to, uh, to back to the U.S. to do the candy thing, none of that would have happened without this initial seed, the podcast. This yeah. has just created such an enormous amount of opportunities. So how do you know a good, a good place to start. I mean, you know, if you if you start and you're like, well, I don't know if this will actually turn into anything. Is there a way, I know that you can't look back and connect the dots, but is there a way to know a gem when you got one? Over time, you'll, I, this is the, <laughs> it's the gut feel thing, you know? Yeah. It's, it's the thing you, you, you kind of feel, does it feel right? I mean, I, I pretty much everything I do, I do by looking at 
what does my heart say? How, does it feel right or mm -hmm. doesn't it feel right? And if it doesn't feel right, I, I start questioning it. And But uh, over time, you develop this, I think you, de you certainly have that. And then you develop this, this ability to, to sense, yeah. is this something that I want to do? And sometimes you have to do something without an immediate return. Right. I mean, that's, that's the part, because I put this thing out there. I don't charge for it. Mm -hmm. I don't have many advertisers on it. So it's like, it's this, this labor of love kind of thing. Sometimes you have to make a, a decision to put 500 bucks, $10,000, yes. whatever your, your budget is into a project to see if it's going to work or not. I invested Give it in a hardware. I invested in, in a few things, like yeah. a good microphone, all of these things to, to get a good quality show out and, mm -hmm. and, and some education. And so this whole thing, um, there's a bit of money in there, but it, I, it always felt right to do. Yeah. And it took us several years to then start generating that return. Yeah. And it was something that felt right. So I'm, I'm really a believer in, the, I, I call it the karma principle, you know? You put something out yeah. there it's like for everyone to take and then something good will happen. Something will grow out of that. And not just, again, you have to put some hard work into it. I mean, you've been working at this since before I have. Oh, I can't well, believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, and you've been working all day here. You're much more of a trooper than I am because I've been just hanging out there and talking to people. And <laughs> well, well, you know, we're both talking to people. That's, true. that's what matters. And, it's true. and that's part of what helps um, those seeds grow yes. is, is really that networking aspect. And it things. doesn't take much. That's the thing. Nowadays, with a with a tool like the iPhone you can record something so quickly you can get it in front of people um, there are so many great apps out there yeah. to, 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 to do a production on iOS just oh, definitely in general you don't have to have a whole setup like this in and, order to do something and even the microphone on the iPhone is so good that for a beginner I wouldn't even bother buying an expensive microphone for now. You, you can use the iPhone, yeah. and it's it's going to be good enough well, for the beginning, I, and then you can upgrade uh, over time. You know, my ears, please save my ears. Don't I, don't go buy an expensive microphone, but at least, at least yeah. protect people's ears. I mean, I, I'm a big believer in that. Me too. I, th I think that the content and the packaging are both yeah. equally important. Um, there, there's there's content out there that is not really a lot of content with mm. huge packaging. I listen to that once or twice and it yeah. pleases my ears, but I don't get anything from it. And there is good content out there that doesn't sound good and I don't yeah. listen to that either. It's so package, I, I want definitely. both, I want both. So in terms of the business of, of all of this, of podcasting and everything, you were saying that there, were, there are lots of opportunities out there. Uh, is there another way that we can focus on opportunities or go down those paths with other than what we've just been talking about, putting a lot of hard work into it, throwing out seeds. Well, one of the important things is, is the, I think, the selection of what you talk about. It's, it, there, there are podcasts out there that talk about everything and nothing at the same time. Yeah. Those don't work for me. But the ones See, that focus on a very narrow niche, yeah. those that go, I don't know, weird example, um, types of strawberries. I don't know. Type of what? Types of strawberries. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's a very tight niche. And how, how to I cultivate... I didn't even know there were different types of strawberries. There are like several hundred different kinds what? of strawberries out there. Yes, there are. I'm, I'm not an expert. I just, that. That's just a little bit of trivia, I know. Wow, this guy. So, so there, there would be a... There, this would be a topic that probably every single strawberry farmer in the world would want to listen to. Yeah. So you have that audience because I bet there is no podcast for strawberry farmers out there. Right. So if you are good at that, make that into a topic and don't worry about finding content because you will over time have better ideas right. and stuff. When I started the podcast, I was afraid that after 10 shows, it would be over. Done. And it's not. I'm now on episode 550 or something and it's, yeah. it keeps going every week and um, I get questions and I answer them. And mm -hmm. that's it. so, so if you have that niche, Keep sticking to that and feed it, and yeah. you will have a built-in audience that no one else has but you. Well, you're on the tech guy a lot, um, yes. imparting your wisdom on photography and all the, sorts of stuff. The, the photo guy. The photo guy. The photo guy. <laughs> That's quite a title. Leo, Leo coined that, not I. Oh, well, of course. He calls me the you photo can't, guy. You can't coin your own term. No. I don't think. No. <laughs> so um, talk a little bit about your photography, where people can actually access that. And how, I would love to know how you're using a particular social social media network. Like, is Google Plus really doing it for you? Or do you not, really. not subscribe to that? Not really. I'm, I'm on Google Plus. I'm on Twitter. Hmm. I was on Facebook. I actually quit Facebook a year ago. Um, so I'm one of those 
that didn't work for me yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, for various reasons I'm not going to go into now. Um, Twitter still works best for me. Okay. Google Plus has a lot of photographers. There's an awesome amount of photographers yeah. out there. Um, but there's also a lot of noise out there. Yeah. Especially in the photography field. I see a lot of noise. So um, it, was, it was getting too much for me. Okay. So I'm still on Google Plus. I interact on Google Plus, but I'm not making this my primary platform. Okay. Twitter is my primary, primary uh, social media platform right now. Interesting. And, um, and you still find it easy to share your photos and get people engaged. Well, I, I have tips from the top floor, and I have a German podcast mm -hmm. called Happy Shooting. Right. Uh, funny enough, it's an English name, but it's a German show. And those reach an audience and, and this way I get I also get to include some of my photography there and uh, be it as cover art in the in the in the episodes or or in other contexts um, we do workshops mm -hmm. all over the world so um, yeah. which have grown out of the podcast because people wanted to get that content in a real life context so I was actually forced into doing the workshops by my audience they insisted on me doing yeah. workshops. So it's, it, was, it wasn't even the business idea, I'm going to do workshops now. Right. No, I was asked to. So this, is, cool. this is what it, but it pretty much created this business for me automatically. That's kind of what happened to us as well. Very cool. Well, I, I am unfortunately going to have to let you go. You guys for can me. find out more from him, ask him questions. Like he said, he's out there. He's responding to you guys. Uh, Twitter handle Chris Marquardt at Chris Marquardt that's Chris M-A-R-Q-U-A-R-D-T right I apologize long uh, name <laughs> just google tips from the top floor tips from the top floor probably an easy way to get to you Chris Photography uh, Chris yes. Marquardt dot com same uh, as Chris Marquardt on Twitter and on Google Plus you'll find me thank no you problem. so much for joining Thanks for me I really me. appreciate your time awesome and I will see you hopefully around, around. alright okay. <laughs>